All right, so this is a completely brand new Acer laptop. Um, this is the uh, Acer Aspire 315, model N23C3. The full model number is A315-24PT-R4U2. There's an ant coming in to get out of the rain. Anyways, we're gonna use a J1 or JIS1 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom, okay? So let's go ahead and start removing them. You wanna keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them oops, flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got one there. And we'll just go across two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three. There's a battery reset hole here. All right, you can press that button by uh, using a folded out small paper clip. Uh, sometimes if the computer doesn't power on properly, uh, pushing that button might help. Just press and hold that for about 15 seconds and you should be good to go. Alright, if there's any other weird things happening with your computer, maybe it's not shutting off or something, you can press that and it will usually power it off. Okay, anyways, let's continue removing all these screws. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living, all right? Recently, I actually haven't been getting too many repair jobs, so hopefully you guys can consider helping me out if these videos are helping you save a bunch of money. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and now that we got all the screws out, let's go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. So I haven't opened this model before, so I'm not exactly sure, but most of them I can get my fingernails in here and then I would push my thumb on the palm rest, not on the touchpad, just the palm rest area. Okay, and you can see the model here, Acer Aspire 3, 15. All right, anyways, we'll get my fingernail in there and push with my thumb, we'll go with both hands. And hopefully, there you go, you can see it's popping out. We'll go over to this side now, since we don't want to push on the touchpad, and do the same thing. And you can see it's popping up. So now we're going to carefully close the laptop. We have a gap here. Okay, usually once I have that, I can pull up here, and I can push down with my fingers on the rest, I mean with my thumb, to create a gap. And then, as you can see, I just pop my thumbnail in there, and it popped open. So we're going to do the same thing over here, pull up, push down with my thumb, and then pop up right there, slide that through. Okay, a lot of times on the back, you can kind of just wiggle the case and the rest will come out. If it doesn't, you can try popping a pry tool in there. You can see my fingernail works really well for that. Um, again, this is a brand new laptop, barely even used. We installed some, or my customer uh, was installing some of their software and everything, and they said it's at the point where they'll be happy to just clone everything over to it now, okay? This had me a little worried. I thought this was the SSD memory, but this is probably the RAM soldered onto the motherboard because there's no replaceable RAM. There's the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD right here, um, which makes sense because it did say it was like a Western Digital, I believe. All right, one screw removed. After you remove that screw, you can pull the SSD up slightly, grab it, and then you kind of just wiggle and pull it back. And there we go. There's the M uh, M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD, and yes, it's a Western Digital. All right, you can put any M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD in here. So I get people asking, well, uh, is it Gen 3, is it Gen 4, is it like, it shouldn't matter. The SSDs are backwards and forwards compat compatible usually. Um, there are some rare cases, like really rare, where the SSD will, make the computer not start up properly. I had one where the computer wouldn't turn on unless you had it plugged in, which was really weird. And then I had to look around, just order a bunch of different SSDs. There were no specific um, specs that made it more compatible. It was just a specific brand for some reason that was causing it, and I'm not sure why. All right, there's the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. Actually, let me get a thumbnail here. Let me actually get this SSD in there. All right, so it goes in slightly at an angle. I like to pinch with the connector to get that in. All right, kind of have to wiggle a little bit. All right, now that we got the SSD in, we're just gonna get the screw back in place. And I try and center the SSD with the screw. You can kind of see like it's not even with the 
ring. Let me actually zoom in here to show you what I mean. Hopefully you can see. All right, so I see more of this like golden color on that side. So I try and even it out and then tighten the screw down. Okay, just like that. All right, let me show you more of the connectors. I'm not gonna take everything out, but uh, here's the battery model. Uh, AP20CBL. So if you need to replace the battery, there's that. Um, I don't want to pull everything out again. This is a completely brand new computer. This model is actually also new, I believe. Um, so I don't want to mess with stuff and then accidentally break things because I won't be able to get parts. But uh, let me see. Maybe we'll at least kind of lift the battery a little bit just to see what's underneath. Okay. But again, I don't want to pull the whole thing apart because there is some risk uh, involved and I don't want to risk destroying a brand new laptop, okay? So it is just held in with those two screws apparently and you can see the connectors underneath here. Pretty interesting, there's a lot of wiring going on. So you got the touchpad trackpad connector going over here, keyboard connector here, you got this little cable going to the little sensor down here, which is probably a Hall Effect sensor. Um, usually those uh, sensors tell the computer when the screen is opened and closed. So um, if that is a, in fact a Hall Effect sensor, then keep in mind that if for some reason this goes bad, it might not go into sleep mode or shut the screen off if you close the screen, or sometimes it gets permanently where it thinks it's closed and then you won't have any uh, the ability to see anything. Um, yeah, so they actually label this JTP1, JKB1, so keyboard for KB, a TP touchpad, obviously. Um, and then this one says JHS1, so I don't know what that means. There's also a bunch of other labels around it, which I'm not sure. This is JRTC1, which is the real-time clock battery. Some people call it the BIOS, CMOS, whatever, UEFI battery. All right, there's this little button here that you can, again, push through the bottom of the cover. Speaker connectors right there. On this model, the speaker connectors are separate. There's a separate I.O. board here for the USB 3 port, headphone jack, and then the hard drive and power activity lights. Uh, these have little flip latches that you can flip it up and then pull these cables out. Um, same thing on this side. The fan is on top. It looks like there's only two screws holding the fan in place. Um, again, I'm not going to try and rip it out, so I don't want to mess with it too much, right? You got the wireless antennas going here to the wireless card, um, and the white antenna goes to the white arrow, black antenna goes to the black arrow. If you're trying to remove the antennas, you go from the tail and you just pull straight up. I like to use, like, two fingers like this and then pull it up like that. All right, CPU is soldered to the motherboard with this little heat sink. It doesn't look like a crazy heat sink, um, but... Yeah, usually the heat is all concentrated on the die. It goes through this pipe. It has like a slight vacuum with some vapor in it. And then that goes to like these thin fins that spread the heat over a large surface area for the air to blow it out. Here you have the LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna touch this like to pull it out or move it at all, make sure that you disconnect the battery. So the battery's here. Usually you'll use your wi the wings and I kind of just use that wiggle and it'll slowly pull itself out. And then open the laptop, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. Okay, I guess they knew that this charge port um, design, because it's so small, is very likely to break. So it is removable. You do need to undo the screws for the hinge and lift the hinge up. Um, usually what I do is I open the laptop slightly, all right, get my hand like in between the screen and the keyboard, undo the screws, and then let this drop down, and that hinge will be slightly up. Then I can get in there easier and flip it back all the way. Um, you do want to be careful that you don't break the casing here, so slowly open it and make sure you don't hit that. Okay, after you flip that up, it looks like the charge port does just pull straight out, um, like upwards. It has little wings that fit into these little grooves. Um, and then this connector, you kind of, again, just wiggle and pull. All right, I think that's pretty much all there is inside here to show um, without taking the entire motherboard or logic board out. It looks like they had uh, some design thought to put a little cage around this. They have these little metal um, areas that say clip, like clip one, clip two, clip three, clip four, but there's no clips in here. So I guess they probably were like, eh, that's not necessary, and just tossed it out. Okay. Anyways, um, oh yeah, fan connectors right there in case you're wondering. 
But yeah, other than that, let's go ahead and get this back together. And yeah, I think this one, the HS, is probably Hall sensor or Hall effect sensor. Um, that's my guess. All right, so we got the cover back in place. Um, the top was last to go, so let's actually push that down first and then work our way down the sides. Okay, and then down the front. And usually I push down and this way at the same time. Okay, it's not too noticeable, but that's how you get the clips to go in easier. Okay. And let's go ahead and get these screws back in, and that's pretty much it. We're going to flip it over, power it back on. Um, this model is very nice and easy to upgrade the SSD on, but sadly, the RAM is soldered to the motherboard, can't be upgraded. Um, I usually hate when they do that. The worst thing is sometimes the RAM gets corrupted, and if it's built into the motherboard or the logic board, then you can't really do anything about it. Imagine having to throw your entire computer away just because the RAM went bad. Could you imagine if they made it so that your finger, if it breaks, like you're, you just die? Like that makes no sense. <laughs> like why? Like, I don't know why the manufacturers designed it that way to wear a tiny component, which should be easily replaceable, um, kills your entire computer, especially one that can kind of fail pretty often. So it's not even like it has to completely die. It could be just like a small portion of the RAM is bad, and then that's enough to kill your computer. So it's kind of like you got a cut, and then you just <laughs> you can't function anymore because you got a cut. All right. Okay. And then the other thing is you can't even replace whatever got damaged. So very bad design. All right. Anyways. In most cases, RAM lasts a very long time, but uh, it does go bad, so yeah, it kind of sucks. And also, you can't upgrade to a larger amount. Okay, let's flip this over. Um, we did disable Secure Boot on this to do the clone, so I do have to press F2 delete on boot. I think it's F2, but I'll press F2 and delete just to be safe. All right, it is powering on, so there we go. Oops. Oh, can you see that? All right, it asked for the password. You can look, I just put password. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go to boot mode, re-enable UEFI. Oh, sorry, you can't even see, so here. Um, if you're wondering if you can't enable or disable UEFI, it's because it requires a supervisor password to let you do those settings. So I'm gonna clear that off, and now you can see there's no password anymore. So now if I go, I can't change the secure boot anymore. Anyways, we're going to exit saving changes, and that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. It really does help. Um, yeah, and if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps if I didn't already say that. I don't know. I just kind of sometimes loop it over and over again. If you can't help out that way, again, you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And as you can see, yeah, it's 3.44 a.m. I am not going to be sleeping at all tonight. <laughs> um, anyways, I've been having busy day. Busy, but not enough work, to be honest. I haven't been getting... I haven't been busy because of work related stuff though yeah recently I got a few the last like week or two it's been so slow um, anyways one other thing which I didn't mention is it's always a good idea to restart the computer after doing some big hardware upgrades so yeah that's it thanks for watching I'll see you on the next one let's drop this bye